do you think? <laughs> Great to uh, see you all here on this rainy April Fool's night <laughs> on a fool's errand. So yes, my name is Melissa. Uh, my first name is Melissa. And it means <laughs> the kids in the audience tonight. No entomologists in the house. No honeybees left on the planet. <laughs> My second name is Elvira, or Elvira, depending on how you pronounce it. Elvira means counseled by elves, which is true. It also means true, which is also true. So I am here to cross-pollinate you with fairy dust. But first what I'd like to share with you is my theme song. And uh, if you don't have your own theme song, I highly recommend it. Uh, for tonight, you can share mine. Uh, so feel free to join in if you know this song. <laughs> Ooh, baby, do you know what that's worth? Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. Is it And I have been for that long uh, trying to figure out how I can help make heaven a place on earth. Native people suggest walking on the earth as though she's your own mother. Has anyone done this? No. Walked on your mother's back? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not the only hippie child whose job it was yeah. to walk on my mother's back. Yeah. <laughs> so you know that when the person you're walking on also feeds you and clothes you and houses you and doesn't beat you, you do it very carefully. You don't strip mine her, you don't cover her in concrete, you don't deforest her, unless of course she wants a Brazilian. <laughs> so why is it that sexy talk is also called dirty talk? And dirt is just another word for earth and we need the earth for everything. Maybe we need sex for everything. Or maybe that's just me because I have Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, in my blood. <laughs> Does anybody remember her big bosomed gothic shows from the 1980s? Well, I clearly did not inherit the bosoms, so you can call me Elvira, Mistress of Polygonousness. <laughs> Polygonous. Any etymologists in the house tonight? Want to take a guess on what polygonous means? Just a little bit dirty. <laughs> you can call me mistress of a little bit dirty. <laughs> Speaking of mistresses, is anybody married? Uh, in a oh. committed relationship? <laughs> so uh, can you give me one word that describes your relationship right now? No. <laughs> no. Habit. 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 Anybody else? <laughs> Nobody else is in a committed partnership right now. Complex. Uh, I do. Please? Complex. Complex. Uh huh. Anybody else? Uh, open minded relationship. Open minded. Boom! <laughs> so notice nobody said sustainable. <laughs> Loving, you've got each other's backs. You're not exploiting resources. Or are you? <laughs> <laughs> sustainable is the hot word of our times. Everybody's trying to figure out how to make their homes more sustainable, their work more sustainable, their food, their agriculture more sustainable. So that we can just continue using what we see as resources for ourselves alone, as opposed to developing a living relationship with the very thing that makes it possible for us to exist at all, namely the Earth. That would be somewhat remarkable, wouldn't it, if we had a sexy relationship with the Earth? <laughs> I recently heard this on a nature show. <laughs> Imagine our world without 
sun. Male emperor penguins face the nearest that exists on planet Earth, winter in Antarctica. It's continuously dark, and the temperature drops to minus 70 degrees centigrade. Yet the penguins stay when all other creatures have fled, because each guards a treasure, a single egg resting on its feet and kept warm by the downy bulge of its stomach. Surely, no greater ordeal exists for any animal. Then I overheard this conversation between two humans. You must have had a really hard time living in London, since you're from California. <laughs> it's true, I like the sun. I can go a few days without work, but after a week, I'm like, okay, where's my sun? <laughs> Surely. No greater ordeal exists, except for faced by this creature, the female Empress California, deprived of seven days of sun. <laughs> Here we have a classic comparison between nature's ecosystem and human nature's ego system. <laughs> I have one little bit that I would love to get your help on before I sign off for tonight. This is uh, incomplete, so I'm thinking maybe I can crowdsource uh, some additional lyrics. It's a song I'm working on. <coughs> anybody hungry? <laughs> Has anybody noticed how the sound of crinkling plastic has created a Pavlovian response in us that's related to food? When did we start equating plastic to food? Not just us, but animals, our pets as well. Their ears perk up when they hear the plastic crinkling. So I have a little song. It goes, plastic, it's fantastic, makes my lungs so elastic. So, any suggestions on the next lyric? Spastic? <laughs> Classic? Any other words? That's sick. That's sick. Thoracic? Thoracic. Jurassic? Jurassic. <laughs> Last chance. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs> Mistress, Melissa Elvira signing off.